Hey guys, I'm Cameron Van Hoy. Thanks for joining me here today as I talk about how to direct a movie. I have recently directed my first movie and I learned a lot and I thought I'd share some of my experiences, knowledge, um, and failures with you guys. Maybe it'll help you uh, to direct your own movies. Directing films is an incredible thing. It's very much so like being a general. You're leading a group of people into battle, essentially, because production is most certainly a battle. And your, your goal is to be victorious. I don't think anyone who's directing tries to fail. You know, it's kind of like a war. Like, you know, there's, there's some positions in life where people are just kind of dragging their feet or don't really care about what they're doing. I don't think that's the case with anyone who's directing a movie. Anytime you're in the director's chair, you care. If you don't, you're a messed up person. You have a, you have a problem that you need some serious psychotherapy for. When you're directing a movie, you care, right? Like if you don't, you are demented because it is so hard to even get into the position to direct a movie. To not care, to not give it everything that you have is suicide. Now that doesn't mean that you need to be like biting your nails and a ball of stress and some like wild megalomaniac who's just bent on directing the greatest movie to the detriment of others or your own health either. Okay, like, like, like that's the extreme. You know, like I made the comparison of being a director is like being a general going into war. Well, you know, hopefully you're not the general that doesn't care if every single man on your platoon dies. So you gotta kind of find a middle ground between these two. That's the first thing that I'd say about directing a movie. Directors have to know a lot of things because movies are comprised of a lot of arts. As a director, you have, you're, you're dealing with so many different components in order to make a film. You're dealing with storytelling, right? So there's, there's like the, the literary aspect of storytelling, right? Which kind of starts with the script and the, and the story that you're, that you're working with. There's actors, which is the performing arts. Right, uh, and then many times dance becomes a part of, of that as well. Like dance choreography, even if you're not doing a musical, there's blocking, which is almost it's it's like almost dance choreography to an extent. There is there's painting, right, which, which is the composition, painting and photography. You could call it, you could kind of put those into one composition, mise en scene, color palettes, the way you're arranging the images within this frame, right? It's like a sensibility for style and aesthetic. Um, there's fashion, costuming, wardrobe. Uh, there's music, right? With, with your score or original needle drop um, scoring. There's sound design, which kind of plays into music. It's like composing, you know, audio experiences using the soundscapes of the film. And so many other components that make up a movie and so as a director you have to be able to speak to all of these different art forms to some extent now yes you're going to hire people who are going to help you to do the best job that you can you're going to hire an editor to help you tell the story and cut the movie and you're going to trust them you're going to hire a cinematographer to work behind the camera and get the best images and work with light in the best way to compose shots that can help you to tell your story. You're gonna work with uh, actors. You're gonna work with set designers. You're gonna work with producers. By the way, that's another one of the arts that I didn't mention is just producing. Like as a director, you have to understand production and producing. It's such a part of it. Um, and, and that's kind of like a business thing. You know, it's like the art of money and the art of business, and the art of managing people which is a huge part of directing. You know, lots of times you'll see that a director is the producer of a movie, and then there are other times when the director is not the producer of a movie. Anytime a director can get producers behind them that can support them enough to where they don't have to worry about producing the film, those people are blessed and they're very lucky. Because it's hard to find great producers, it's very hard. But you know, producing is, well, you know, producing has changed over the years, and I don't want to get too much into producing in this specific episode, but a producer's essential job is to manage the production of a film, right? And that means both the creative 
and the business and financial ends of making a film. Like a traditional producer would find a script, find a director, attach a director to a script, and then take the movie from beginning to end. And the director would kind of like, uh, kind of like the relationship of say a real estate developer and an architect. You might have a real estate developer, which is kind of like a producer. It's their job to get the plans, get an architect, and get construction people, and then also deal with the bank to make a building come to life. To take it from its drawings, to its foundation pour, to its structural build, to its getting the thing rented and sold out there in the world, right? Like that's like a producer and a director's kind of like an architect. They have to make sure that the building is both aesthetically pleasing and able to house people safely, right? It's got to do its job. Like in the case of a movie, it has to entertain or it has to be cathartic or it has to make you laugh or you know, whatever it's supposed to do. It's got to carry you through. There are a lot of director producers. Generally, these are people who are working from the ground up to get the movie made. It's one thing if there's a producer who's attaching a director and then maybe attaching talent and then getting the thing made. Uh, it's another thing if a director, say, wrote a script that they're passionate about or found a script that they're passionate about and then go out and maybe attach talent to themselves and then go out and try to piece some of the financing together that exists or maybe even work with some producers to do these things, right? But those are more producerial jobs as opposed to being a director who is just focused on making the film. So telling your producers, hey, I like this idea for this actor for this role, or I'd like to have this many days to shoot. And I, you know, these are the locations that I want. And it's like kind of like asking the producers and you know, it's always a collaboration. You're not always going to get everything that you want unless you're Christopher Nolan working with the producers to gather the materials that you need to make the best film that you can. What does a director do on set? I mean, there's a lot of preparation that goes into making a film before you even get on set as a director. You have to read the script, you have to have an understanding for the script, you have to have an understanding for the story that you're telling, and then you have to communicate with all of the department heads on all the materials and ideas that are needed in order to be ready to even film, right? Because before you go into shooting, you you know, the set people need to gather all the props and build the sets, and find the locations. The wardrobe people need to get the wardrobe together. The actors need to rehearse their lines and understand their characters and their conflicts and the scenes moment to moment and their behavior. And, and the, the director of photography needs to understand what you're going for aesthetically and what the thing needs to look like and where you're going to shoot and how you're going to shoot, what the style's going to be, is it going to be handheld, is it going to be locked off, is it going to be a lot of movement, is it going to be very static. It's just, you know, it's just kind of endless. And it's all got to work towards, you know, the one kind of big idea that you're trying to achieve with the film, or maybe even the several ideas, right? Like you might have, you have your vision as a director and you have to start utilizing your team to achieve your vision. And a lot of this happens before you go to shoot anything, before you step foot on set, is you're spending time with these people in prep. It's called prep. In preparation for making the movie. Once you've done all that prep, and that first day of principal photography rolls around, you show up on set and it's go time, right? You start making the movie. And this, you know, this is a, it's, it's a high pressure environment production because it's very expensive and you don't have a lot of time because time is money. So every single day you are, you're shooting, right? And when you're shooting, you're managing massive amounts of people and elements like the sun, bad weather, animals, children, like all sorts of things that you are managing in order to achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, whether it's a shot of, you know, coffee being poured into a cup and then the camera pulls out to reveal your central character, checking the clock at Grand Central Station as a hundred extras walk behind it, whatever it may be, right? Like you're organizing all the elements, everything from 
the coffee, to the mug, to the 100 extras at the location of Grand Central Station, the bad weather in New York on that day, and then your entire, all of these things are coming together to achieve what it is that you're trying to achieve, moment by moment, shot by shot, so that you can tell your story, or at least get into the editing room to start cutting it together. There's a lot that goes into production. And in order to be prepared for this, you need to spend a lot of time in prep, really communicating to everybody what you're doing. You have to have a good vision. You have to also have to be very organized. This is where your shot list comes into play. This is where storyboards come into play. This is where a shooting schedule comes into play. And this is where, even though the director's not so involved in this, it's very good to have an understanding of that your budget comes into play. Like these are some of your key documents that really help you through production. And every single day you're gonna have a shot list and you're going to work to achieve everything on that list. Right? And if you start falling behind and not shooting all the shots that you had planned to shoot on a day, it becomes very complicated because you, you, you can't get into the editing room with that, without these things. So you have to start passing them off to other days and this is where you can go over budget and go over schedule. Some of the things that I've encountered while filming um, movies um, as a producer and as a director is you know you get on the set and you start doing a scene and you know your AD who really is your best friend and you need to have a great relationship with I mean, you have to have a great relationship with everyone on the set but you're gonna work very closely with your assistant director your assistant director's job is to help you to stay on schedule and help organize the things that you need for your shoot right then and there. so okay first shot of the day is the scene with the pouring of the coffee at Grand Central Station. Well, that AD is gonna go to every department and make sure everything is ready, right? So the AD has put all, has put together, has to put together all the elements and make sure that it's ready. While the director is maybe working with the actors, um, answering their questions, answering questions for really any of the department heads, any of the, the last minute questions that they might have, working with the DP to arrange the shot. Like, making sure the fine tuning of all of the elements that are being gathered by the AD are in place so that this shot can be executed the right way. Um, and then you start shooting, right? But the actors, you know, you maybe, maybe you're not getting it. Maybe the performance isn't there. You know, it's the first day in, the actors aren't really feeling it yet. What do you do, you know? Um, do you move on because you gotta make your day? If you do, you might be sacrificing a relationship with your actor because your actor is going to trust you, right? Your actor is at least going to want to trust you. Your actor is going to want to trust that you care about their performance. They want to feel safe in your hands. So if you don't give them the time that they need, especially at the beginning of the day or the beginning of the shoot, or even if it's later in the shoot and everything's going wrong, where this is a pivotal moment in the film and it it's really like it's one of their big it's one of their big moments, you know, and maybe they're not nailing it. Maybe something happened to them that day personal that's just completely taken their juju away or sapped their emotional availability or whatever it may be. You know, you, you're you're going to have to balance your schedule, your budget, and your all you know, your producer is going to be breathing down your neck like, "Hey, we've got to move on." We have to finish our day. We don't get to come back to this location. And your actor is gonna be giving you pressure going, hey, I'm your central character in this movie. You gotta have my back. My performance has to work. This film doesn't work if this performance doesn't work, right? And, and then your DP at the same time wants the thing to look good and maybe they're taking longer to light than they should have taken because of whatever reason, the sun's been blocked by clouds or they didn't get a truck full of lights. It got in an accident on the way to set. And they didn't go where they need, right? And so your DP is gonna start going, dude, I, I need, this has to look good. I'm not ready to film yet. And you're running out of the time you need and you know that you're gonna need a certain amount of time to get the shot because maybe you have an animal in there or you have a kid or it's an emotional, right? So you, you know, you're weighing all of these things constantly trying to make the right decisions to help make the best film possible. Um, that's where it suddenly becomes very complicated as a director. You have to manage everybody. You have to keep everyone on your side. You have to keep them happy, but you also have to keep them honest. Honest about the work that they're doing, right? You have to get what you need out of people. 
So it becomes a job of really managing people and time and you know creative talents. Uh, that's I think one of the the most important things for a director to know before going in to set. You know the the difference between directing a short film and directing a feature length film. I think it's just the difference between a sprint and a marathon. When you're directing a feature, by the second week you can become exhausted, and everyone else involved can really be tired. You know, especially if you're doing a smaller film because you're working grueling hours. Maybe even night shoots. Maybe your whole first week you're doing nights, so you're shooting from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. every day. You're going home, passing out, and waking up at, you know, two, and fielding phone calls from everyone. You know, the actors' agents are calling with their, you know, praises if you're lucky or complaints. Uh, the producers are calling. Uh, everything that's going on. So you're like managing everybody and talking about. All sorts of things that you feel like you missed the first day, or trying to get everyone on the same page. You know, it's like this constant communicating with your entire team to just push it up this hill. There's really not a lot of sleep for a director, especially as films get smaller, like budget-wise. Uh, you might then, in those instances, you're shooting, you know, six days a week, and then on your day off, you're still working. That becomes very grueling when you're doing it for four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Seven weeks, whereas a short film, maybe you're shooting a week. I mean, two weeks tops if it's really an extensive short film. I think that's the biggest difference. I'm Cameron Van Hoy. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. It helps our algorithm and it helps to uh, find you again.